Okay, so hey guys, and welcome back to another predictions video. And in today's video, I'm going to be predicting the Lescarat versus a Sandstrom fight. If you are new around here though, and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like video if you do need like video, and let's get straight into it. So going into this fight, Lescarat is 10 and 0 with four KOs, and Sandstrom is nine, uh, eight, two and two with two KOs. This fight is for the WBA World Super Flyweight title. Lescarat's last fight was a win at Vian Amazon versus Chavez, and Sandstrom's last fight was a win via majority decision versus. Wise one sir. I hope I pronounced that name right. I really don't think I have. This is in Sandstrom's home country of Australia. Sandstrom's losses have come versus Hills in 2021 and Cashman in 2020. And to speak a bit more about what I've just said there, obviously, like I mentioned, this for the world title, this for Lescarat's world title, a title which he's now defended four times. This might be a fifth now. Uh, and you know she's dominating at the moment of course she's the unbeaten fighter but she's coming to Sandstrom's home country which I have a lot of respect for and there isn't really too much footage of the either of their two's last fights but you know nonetheless I feel like I understand what they are both about as fighters and I've seen them both fight and watched quite a few of Les Grant's fights to be fair but Sandstrom I've seen her fight and seen what she's about and obviously she's going to have the eyes on her she's going to actually have television footage footage of her which is going to be great and you know Samstrom obviously she's had them losses but they've come very early on in her career I've had a lot of respect for her because she has gone and been willing to travel around to fight and willing to take fights and you know like I say travel around early on in her career and really does deserve this shot now and to have it in her own country I have a lot of respect and I feel like deserves deserving I suppose she is of that opportunity and yeah so it's going to be an entertaining fight I think possibly I don't know necessarily it could be it has the makings to be an entertaining one or not an entertaining one we'll have to wait and see uh, but speak about the couple of other fights on the card which I wanted to mention there's a few quite good fights on this card I only wanted to talk about two but there is quite a few which I'll talk about in my next weekly fighting roundup next week uh, but also on this card is Pampeon versus Zinad uh, which is a IBF world title eliminator in which I think Pampeon will win via TKO in round six obviously this is a, a world title eliminator but you know it's for a Terbiev's IBF title and I don't see either of them going on to fight for the world title after this fight to be completely honest it's two fighters who haven't really fought anybody too much of note yet it's kind of their first major world level kind of fight Zinad's kind of one of them fighters which has seemingly come out of nowhere and built himself a, a, a ranking a world ranking and I respect Pampion for being able to for wanting to take this fight but from what I've seen from Zinad I don't see anything too crazy he very much does lunge in with his work and is quite messy but so can Pampion at the same time be quite messy at times they can just both stand and trade so I think it might be an, an entertaining one they've both got power they're both I'm sure gonna land strong but I think Pampion will be the physically stronger one and the one that which is going to impose himself to be able to actually be able to get the stoppage into the like I mentioned the sixth round and then also on this card which is, I believe the main event fight uh, is Zoo versus Creaty for the Australian Super World Weight title in which I think Zoo will win via TKO in round four obviously Zoo's coming off that last fight where he got dropped he got hurt but he really showed a lot of character to be able to rebuild from that and reset from that and be able to get Creaty out of there in the end. Creaty is somebody who is coming off a loss and a draw, but he's also fought around at top level and the Zarafa loss, there's no real discredit to that, but it did show weaknesses and it showed defensive weaknesses and I think he has his chin in the air a lot. He drops his hands a lot, a lot. He doesn't have much head movement, but I think also Zhu got exposed for minimal head movement in that last fight of his. But I think Zhu with that power and just that will, I don't think Zarafa put it on him as much as what he could have done. I think he probably could have got the stoppage if he really wanted to, but I think Zhu is going to force that stoppage, hopefully not too much, but I think he will end up being able, uh, being able to force the stoppage to be able to get the stoppage early and retain that title of his and you know obviously I think this is probably a good smart matchup for him obviously you don't want to move him too quickly off of that last fight which he had which obviously did well it didn't really go as I expected to an extent and so I think it is a good fight where it's still a top level fighter in Australia but it's not anything too crazy of a step up and like I say I think there's the defensive weaknesses there which is going to be able to take advantage of
But to go back to the Lescurat Sandstrom fighter, Lescurat as a fighter, she covers up well. She's got a relatively nice tight guard. She changes levels well. She's aggressive. She's a come forward type fighter. She's got good movement with her punches. Not always the best of movement without the punches, I suppose, but she does kind of twist and turn and pivot with her punches quite nicely. She can be relatively unpredictable at times with their movements. She's physical at points when she wants to be as well. She can fight on the inside or the outside, that mid-range or close range, I think. Sometimes in close, she can be a little bit messy and a little bit wild at times in close. But I think she can fight on the inside or the outside comfortably. And when she wants to be a come-forward fighter, she pushes her punches and physically pushes you back in the process when she wants to. She throws in bunches, which I think is definitely something which she has over Sandstrom from what I've seen from Sandstrom. I don't believe she throws in punches quite as much. She has a relatively high output and she's got good body work in the process as well. Negatives about her, like I mentioned, can be quite wild at times and can be arm punching quite a lot of times with them looping punches and that's when the accuracy can be a little bit poor at times and you can see that come in like I say she's unpredictable in her movements but sometimes if you can see her shots come in then you can predict that uh, she can overcommit. she can leave her jab out something which I think Sandstrom does as well to leave in that jab out for a bit too long she's I think got a worse jab than that of Sandstrom Sandstrom when she wants to use that jab she can double up on it and set off that jab nicely and I don't think Leskirat does that as much as probably what she could do and when she does I think she can struggle to find range with that jab she ducks her head in she can be like I mentioned messy and close she's not overly technical and she hasn't really got anything crazy in the way of head movement or speed I don't think she's quite as fast as what Sandstrom can be uh, but to speak out more about Sandstrom as a fighter she's got a good strong jab when she wants to use it like I mentioned she works off the jab well she's got that larger frame and if she wants to fight at a mid-range I think that's where she'll do her best work I just don't often think that she does fight a mid-range as much as she should but I'll mention that in a moment to speak a bit more about positives she's a front foot type fighter as well so it's going to be interesting to see if Lescu Rat's just going to willingly go on the back foot or not against her she can be physical in the process as well and she, obviously she is the bigger fighter out of the two from what it seems and with the larger frame so she might be able to out physical Lescu Rat. She resets well off of a clinch or after getting caught with a shot. She can push her shots, push shots away quite well. And like, if you're attacking with shots and they aren't getting onto the target and not finding the right range, she will just willingly push them away and you know just bat them away like they're nothing. And so that's nice to see. She's got solid body work as well when she does put it together. She can deal with physical pressure and a lot of fighters who aren't necessarily that physically strong from the looks of things they can struggle with physical pressure but it seems like Sandstrom can be able to deal with that quite nicely and I would possibly blame that down to a good sense of balance which she just it does seem to possess she's also quite patient when she wants to be as well negatives about her obviously like I mentioned she leaves her punches out leaves her jab out a little bit too much at times she's got a bit of a weaker guard than I'd say Lascurat does Lascurat I'm a fan of her guard she in my opinion, doesn't always commit to shots as much as what I'd like to see. She can lack hooks, lack combinations at times. She does lunge in quite a lot and can clinch and make it messy and smother and be quite predictable and just continuously coming in close. And, you know, I don't think Les Gourette does a lot of her best work in close, but I think, I don't know, Sandstrom doesn't, I don't think hers is overly impressive as well. But she does seem to lunge in quite a lot. Her timing I don't think is amazing or her accuracy. Like I say, boxing at range, I think she has more than capabilities to do it. I just want to see her actually do it. She doesn't seem to gain too much of a rhythm, but also doesn't let her opponents gain a rhythm at the same time. So be interesting to see how she deals with it. And just the consistency of uh, actually being able to land her clean work and be able to do it consistently is something which I don't always think she necessarily has. Lescura is the favourite for this fight. I'm going to say that I think Sandstrom's going to win via unanimous decision. Like I mentioned before, I don't know necessarily how entertaining this fight's going to be. I think it could be quite messy, it could be quite sloppy. I think Sandstrom's going to be able to just draw her out a, a messy, sloppy, you know, unanimous decision win, which at the end of the day, if that's a game plan, then there's nothing against that because if it wins, then it wins. And I think she's going to be lunging in, going in close 
just trying to smother a Lescurat and possibly frustrate her a bit and just offer something different that Lescurat's not physically had to deal with before. And yeah, I think she might just be able to nick a unanimous decision, possibly split decision win uh, from that. Then who she could go on to fight, obviously there could be a rematch with Lescurat, that would not surprise me at all. Somebody like a Robertson would make for a huge Australian fight. Uh, which would be a great one. Uh, she, she's obviously just Drew vs. Gallardo. I wouldn't mind seeing her against Gallardo and Sandstrom, but Robertson and Gallardo might rematch. Or, you know, as another option just to throw in there, Ryan versus Dolan are fighting, and that's a good, very good women's fight, and they could ju like jump onto a world title fight off of that. It would not surprise me, and obviously Sandstrom's not had too much experience herself, and if she becomes a world champion, then why not? You know, why not throw her in with a Ryan or a Dolan and put them on a huge matchroom platform? It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but yeah, that is it for today's video. Hope you did enjoy. Like the video if you did indeed. Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and thanks for watching.